Hi, I'm Bruce McAvoy, pastor of Local and Global Impact. It's a joy to spend the next few minutes with you. Today, we will consider the importance and blessedness of serving. Now, I could spend this entire video sharing impactful stories of serving that motivates you, but I'm going to refrain from that in order to help you see why service is such a valuable and joy-producing tool in the Christ Follower's Toolbox. Each of the 20 tools we will consider in this series are important to experience abundant life in Christ. But for me personally, the opportunity we all have to serve is perhaps the most fun. And I'll be honest, isn't it easier and more joyful to do what is crazy fun? Now you might say, serving? Fun? How? Well, let's start by considering what the Bible says about serving. Three of the Gospels share that the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Christ Jesus gave us the example of himself, and then he illustrates it further on the night he was arrested when he met with his disciples in the upper room. Listen to the words of John chapter 13. He got up from the meal, took off his cl outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin, and he began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with that towel that was wrapped around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you in an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I'm not going to lie, that was a lengthy passage. But did you catch that very end? Now that you know these things, now that you know how to follow my example by serving, you will be blessed if you do them. Consider the irony of that statement. Jesus is saying that when we serve God and, his, and others, it's not only they who will be blessed, but us. God calls us to serve not only because it glorifies him and benefits others, but also because it blesses us. God doesn't need our service. In fact, he specifically taught us not to serve him as though he needed anything. Acts 17.25 says, Nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all humankind life and breath and everything. Our service is most glorifying to God and joyous to us, not when we believe God is dependent on us, but when we realize that we are fully dependent on him. As John Piper puts it, God is seen as glorious when all our serving is moment by moment receiving from God's supply. Both the scripture and Piper's quotation put all the emphasis on God's giving to us when we serve. Think about this. Our service is not primarily us giving to God, but God giving to us. The kind of service that makes God look valuable and thrilling is the kind that serves God by constantly receiving from God. 1 Peter 4.11 describes this beautifully. Whoever serves, let it be as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. We receive the strength that God supplies by faith. That is, we trust moment by moment that what we need in serving him, he will supply, life and breath and everything. God-dependent service 
is the opposite of anxious service. Such serving is happy. It makes God look no less authoritative, but infinitely more desirable. It gives him the glory he deserves. The giver receives glory. We receive blessing. This is the joy of Christian service. Therefore, Psalm 100 states, we serve the Lord with gladness. And while we experience the joy of serving, we ultimately provide others with a tangible expression of the love of Christ. As 2 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15 states, But thanks be to God, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal process and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved. Friends, today's call to action is simple. Pick one way to serve someone in an unexpected manner. This could be buying flowers or a gift for a loved one, perhaps writing a note of love or encouragement to your spouse or friend, doing a chore around the house that you don't normally do or that you have been putting off for more recently, setting aside an evening to spend undistracted time with your spouse, or finally scheduling a time to grab a meal with someone in your life who you know is lonely or hurting. Once this video is over, ask God to open your eyes to see one way you can serve someone today. Ask the Holy Spirit to display the love of Christ through you and rest knowing that your audience is not the world, but your heavenly Father who loves you and will supply all of your needs.